All right, everyone, welcome to Washoe County Libraries Wild Wednesdays with Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things. My name is Beate, and this event is live and can be viewed via Zoom and Washoe County Libraries Facebook events page. And before I introduce our lovely presenters today, I just want to emphasize that if you want to learn more about today's topics, there's supplemental materials and activities that can be found via our website, Washoe County Library, forward slash events, as well as on our Facebook page. Question and answer will follow the formal presentation. And just so you know, so um, our special guest here, there's two parts to this presentation. Um, we've, got, we've got a little mini part A, and then the, the um, main event will follow shortly. With Conservation Ambassadors, I also want to give a huge shout out to Friends of Washoe County Library because that's how we are able to fund these dynamic opportunities for our community. And I want to give a huge shout out to Conservation Ambassadors for what they do for our wild things out there. And this is our friend Gabe Kirshner. I hope I said your name right. You'd think I'd have it right by now, but he's Gabe. And tell us about what's going on today, Gabe. Terrific. Um, well, my name is Gabe, and this is Myrtle. And as with all of the animals that we have here at Wild Things at, at Conservation Ambassadors, we have animals that have either been injured and can't be rehabbed or re-released back out in the wild, or wild animals that people have, have tried to keep as illegal pets. It's a huge problem here in the United States. And um, those animals are usually taken away by our agencies like California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and they're sent to our center. And what we do is we travel to school groups and clubs and camps and libraries, some of my favorite programs, mm -hmm. give us a chance to share amazing wild animals um, up close and personal. Now, obviously, this year we can't be in person, so we're doing this virtual event and um, we're learning as we go and kind of making a little fun. This guy is kind of the um, waiting. Uh, He's the pre-show entertainment. Now, <laughs> what you're looking at is Myrtle, and he is a Western box turtle. This is a Western box turtle. And people always want to know turtles or tortoises. Tur turtles, for the most part, are aquatic in the water. Tortoises are on dry land. And this guy, he kind of he kind of splits the line there. They do like to be in the moist soil around ponds and creeks, but they are pretty good swimmers too. And they at times will walk across the bottom of the of the waterways, exhaling, letting out their air, and actually walking across the bottom. Now, I want to tell you why we have Myrtle. Very strange story. This little box turtle here got hit by an airplane. And yeah, it, he was up there flying. No, he wasn't flying around. He, was, he tried to cross at the Sacramento airport, and he walked across the tarmac. They have a lot of rice fields right around the airport. And apparently, that's where he was living, and he got hit by an airplane. If you look carefully, see on his plastron the belly shell is called a plastron see this little crack right there that used to be a great big crack he also had a crack on the back of the shell on his carapace this area here well over the years of just keeping it clean and letting him have a, a good diet this guy has actually made a very very strong recovery and that's that's how he ended up with us um he's been at our center so long and it, it took so long to close up the shell and we didn't think he was a candidate for rehab back out into the wild. Now, kind of neat too, this box turtle doesn't just eat produce, meaning grass or leaves, and he doesn't just eat meat like fish and, and, and polywogs and, and whatnot. This guy is an omnivore. He eats both meat and plant material. Really good survivor. Probably his favorite diet of all, well, he's, he's blowing bubbles. One of his favorite diet of all is um, our earthworms loves to eat the earthworms. Um, matter of fact, he'll, he'll chase an earthworm across the ground to go after it. And, and you know, we always say how slow the turtle is. Watch this, this guy, well, this is kind of a slippery thing, but he's actually a pretty, pretty quick guy. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Now he's been at our center over 23 years. He's been here a long time, so he's probably 30 year old turtle. Um, yeah, but they live a good long time. They, live, they have a good long lifespan, probably about 45 years, so. What do you think, Beate? Any, any questions I didn't cover? Let's see. We talked about how long you've had him, but there's no way to tell how old he is. No. You know the idea? People say you count the scoots or the sections on the carapace, and you can tell the age of the turtle or the tortoise. That's a fallacy. It's not true. These, this, he's born with each one of these little scoots, right? We're born. When he's hatched, when this guy hatches out, 
he has these exact same number of scoots and they get bigger as he gets bigger. So you can't count those scoots and tell the age of the animal. Um, you can tell a little bit about, well, animals, their, their general size, that they're not just a hatchling, but they grow according to how much food they take in. So this could be as big as he is when he's 45 years old, or he could have gotten to be twice the size. I've seen Western box turtles almost that big. He just hasn't really grown that much. He's adorable. Oh. What an interesting story for a turtle to get hit by an airplane. Turtle by an airplane. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a pretty fast turtle to get hit by an airplane. You got to be pretty fast. And then just to review the Western box turtle, so do we only see them... So where, where else do they yeah, live? Yeah, they, well, that? this guy here, you don't see him in the really arid areas, in the very dry areas, but you see him in, in kind of the uh, soft earth forest with, with creeks. You'll see them on the western half of the United States. Hence, western box turtle. Correct. <laughs> and there's one that lives in the east, and it's called the eastern box turtle. Very creative names. Very, hey, it makes sense. I like names like that. All right, <laughs> should I put him back? Yeah, go ahead and put him back. Yeah. I think we no, got I all that. How he, I talked about how he hinges, right? How he goes all the way in. This is kind of, because he's hinged here, when he closes up, he can act, he's not gonna do it. He's gonna stay out. But he can close that shell all the way up and other animals won't be able to get to him. And he's fairly well protected. Pretty cool. All right, let me put him away. Super. Say goodbye to Myrtle. Bye Myrtle. It's a pretty right. silly name. That's a perfect name. So, <laughs> Welcome to our folks that have joined us. Um, so one of our, our, uh, our questions was, is, is the turtle the surprise animal? So no, he is. No, he's not the main, he's not the main, although he thinks he is. So. <laughs> so what do you have for us, Gabe, for the main event? For the main event. Today we're gonna travel to a beautiful place that I, I hope to one day visit. And I hope to visit um to see all these amazing creatures that we brought um uh, jojo got two representatives uh, for you to meet here today we're going to travel to an island that's about three times the size of california so it's about three times bigger than california off the western coast of africa i'm sorry off the eastern coast of africa don't go to the western coast of africa it's not there it's on the eastern coast of africa and on this island live animals that are found nowhere else on the planet. Nowhere else. And they're fantastic. We brought two of them for you to meet. We're going to start with one. Her name is Samantha. And Samantha has a very unique way of saying hello. So watch carefully because she might only do it one time. From the island of Madagascar. Check her out. All right, Sam. Come on out here and meet everybody in Washoe County. Here we go. Isn't she beautiful? This is Samantha, and you're looking at a brown lemur. This is one of the many lemur species that inhabits the island of Madagascar. They're found nowhere else on the planet except for Madagascar. And this girl here, she's called a brown lemur because, well, I think it's because she's brown. But it'd be very creative names. And if you look at the brown lemur's eyes, if you look just at her eyes, would you think that she's awake in the day, or would you think she's awake at night? I think she has the appearance of a nocturnal or a nighttime animal. Those big, forward-facing, circular eyes. But you know what's funny? She's not. She's diurnal. She's daytime. Yep, it's a good time to talk about that. Nocturnal being nighttime. Diurnal being daytime. This is a daytime animal. At night, she'll be in a tree or kind of a hollow area of a tree, maybe, maybe sleeping or um, being aware of her surroundings. In the daytime, that's when she's up and she's going to look for food. Now, they get up in the morning, they, they live in a family group, a group called a troop, and they say good morning to each other. They greet everybody in their family every morning, and that builds strong family bonds. You guys should try it at home. Get up and say good morning to your, your family members. But this, this girl, she gets up, and you know how one lemur says good morning to another lemur? I'm going I'm to make it sound like a pig. She's going to answer me back. She's going to do something rather strange. Here we go. The lemur, hello. Here we go. Did you guys see what she did? Did you see what she did? Did you see her lick my nose? That's a, le that's a lemur hello. She greeted me, she grunted back, and then she licked the inside of my nose. I'm really, really glad that's not what we do to each other when we get up in the morning. But they go around, they say hello to everybody in the family. Then she takes a bath. Now for her, she doesn't use water. She's actually afraid of the water. 
Where she lives, there are crocodiles. Where she lives, there's danger by the water's edge. She'll take a bath, but she takes a bath up in the trees and she uses her teeth. She has, where are you going, girl? She has rather strange teeth. Her teeth, her four front teeth and her bottom jaw stick out like a comb. They stick straight out like this, like a comb. And she rakes it through her fur. She keeps her fur in perfect, perfect shape. Then she goes looking for food from one tree to the next, looking for fruits and flowers and leaves and bugs. Yet from one tree to the next, she makes this amazing jump. You guys want to see her jump? Do you think we can do that, George? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah this way. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch it. Here we go. Pressure's on the cameraman. <laughs> she jumped to the cat. She loves JoJo. Do you know why she likes JoJo? That's because JoJo's also a very primitive primate. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Big jump. Here we go. Jump. You gonna jump? No jumping? These people, they paid big money. Big oh, that was a you know what? If she wants to, she could lump, jump about 20 feet. She'll use that tail as a sail as she's flying through the air. Pretty cool. Now, little Samantha here, I'm gonna tell you why we have her. Um, she came to us, she was an illegal pet in Palmdale, California, in Southern California. She was taken away. People had her, they were keeping her in a garage and in a small kid. She was taken away and she came to us. And I love being able to share with you, but I'm sure you'll agree. She should be in Madagascar, licking other lemurs' noses. That's where she truly belongs. Now, you know how I said she's a primitive primate? She is a monkey. She is a primate. She's what's called a prosimian or a pre-primate. And like I said, they're found nowhere else on the planet. In Madagascar, there are more than 100 different species of lemur. More than 100 different kinds of lemur. And I say it that way, like not an exact number, because several species have just recently been identified. There's a lot of research going on right now in terms of lemur research, learning about uh, uh, how they survive or um, how they ended up there in Madagascar. And if any of you are really interested in becoming a wildlife biologist, maybe studying animals in the wild, maybe the lemur might be a good study choice. Um, they're fascinating, fascinating creatures. Now this lemur is kind of a, a mid-range size. They get oh, about twice the size with the rough lemurs. And you guys want to meet another one? Another Absolutely. Lemur? All right. Let me put some at the back and we'll bring out another lemur. All right. Here we go. Good girl. Here we go. <laughs> this guy, he's, he's, he's nutty. Our next guest, his name is Ringo. And Ringo has one of the most beautiful tails in the animal kingdom. Just absolutely gorgeous. He's, um, he's one of my favorites to talk about. And he has some really unique traits. And what I'm hoping he's going to do I'm hoping he's going to come out here and sit and feel the sun and put himself into a little position where he's almost sunbathing. It'll be really cool if he does it. So we'll see. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Oh, boy. Welcome to everyone that's just joining us. We've got conservation ambassadors, and Gabe is sharing. This is Ringo. And Ringo is a ringtailed lemur. Oh, he's Obviously, gorgeous. it's called a ringtailed lemur because. But check out that tail. Look at that tail. Isn't that amazing? He has, everybody wants to go to JoJo. It's not fair. He has that beautiful ring tail. Now, he used that ring tail when he's jumping just like Samantha does. He uses it for balance. It's not prehensile. He can't grab onto tree branches with it or carry anything with it. He uses it just for balance when he's jumping. Now, look at his eyes. Also, those great big eyes. It, once again, looks like he would be nocturnal, but he's not. This is a sun worshiper. He likes to sit in the sun and he'll sit up and he'll take in those rays and it plays a big role in his body getting enough vitamin D in order for him to be healthy in the wild. He likes to sit out there and, and, and spend a lot of time with his arms like this, enjoying the sun. Now, his tail, I said he uses it for balance, but he has a cooler thing he does with his tail. When he's arguing over space, the ring tail lemur takes his wrists and on his wrists, he has little scent glands. Little scent glands, oil glands that, that make this stinky oil. I can't really smell it, but other lemurs, they can. And they rub that down through that long and wispy tail. And then when lemurs fight, they come up and they get into each other's face and they wave that tail. And they wave that tail back and forth and they spread their scent. And that's how they say, hey, this area here has been taken. It's how they mark their spot. Kind of cool. I think it beats really fighting. They'll do that too on occasion, but they mostly have stink wars. Pretty neat. Now, he's pretty good size male lemur. The girl ringtail lemurs, they're bigger and they're in charge of the family unit. 
in the primate world, that's not really that that common. But in the ringtail lemurs, oh, he's pooping too. This is like the lemur poop show. Here we go, good oh boy. And in the in the lemur world, in the ringtail lemur world, the girls are in charge. Kind of cool. Now, let me tell you his story. I always like to remind people why we have the animals at our center. This guy, somebody bought in the state of Texas where they don't have very good laws against the private ownership of wildlife, and they tried to sneak him into California. And at the agricultural inspection station, they got caught. Little Ringo here was taken away and sent to us. He now lives with another lemur named Circe. They're doing pretty well. Um, and they give it, oh, there we go. Did you see that? That's pretty exciting. That was a good lemur, hello. There's a good boy. He's, he's still fairly young and learning about doing, doing the shows. Right now, because we're on break a lot, he hasn't been traveling that much. I think he's going to get very excited to be out. Huh. Beautiful. Their hands are much like ours. Four fingers and an opposable thumb. An opposable thumb so they can grab onto things in their fur and they can groom. But he also has opposable thumbs on his feet. He has essentially four hands. He's a great tree climber. He can grab on and never falls. This guy's an amazing jumper. I, I wish I could show it. I don't know if we can try it, I guess. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Sit down on the, on the Let's try this guy. Come here, bud. Come here, Ring. He's going to jump to JoJo. I think JoJo should have done this show. Everybody, all the lemurs want to go to JoJo. It's whoop, whoop. Where are you going? Okay, we'll walk down the rail. He kind of uses his hands and his feet for grabbing on. Never have to worry about these guys falling. Now, they've just found a skeleton of lemur just a few years back. They found a skeleton of lemur. It no longer exists. They don't, they're not in Madagascar any longer, but they found a skeleton of a lemur that was so large that the biologists think that, well, it was probably about a 150 pound lemur, the size of a German shepherd dog. Imagine a lemur 150 pounds. I bet if they came over to say hello, you'd, you'd let them lick your nose. At that point, it'd be a, a pretty big greeting. He's beautiful. A lot of people love the lemurs because they have kind of a colorful face and rather clown-like in their expressions. They're beautiful, but you know, and we all love them. Everybody loves lemurs. I, when I'm doing a program, I like to ask who loves lemurs and everybody raises their hands, but we're not really doing enough to protect the land of the lemurs, Madagascar. We're, we're doing well with the lemurs in captivity they're being bred and the zoological parks have lots of lemurs and people are learning about them we need to put that into play and we need to really protect madagascar the, the the only place that these guys are found in the wild isn't he amazing he's beautiful would you have a question for me well oh, here we go we have questions all right let me go to the top all right, how, so we're going back to Miss Samantha. How rare are brown lemurs? You know what? Brown lemurs are actually one of the more common lemurs, but all lemurs are considered endangered in the wild because of the loss of the forest that they call home. So while the brown lemur is not critically endangered, they, they are um, disappearing at an alarming rate. We do have to be careful with them. The brown lemur, it's interesting that you brought that up. The brown lemur breeds very readily in captivity and Duke University in the East Coast, they've bred some brown lemurs and they're actually reintroducing them back out into the wild. It's one of the few primates that are actively being bred in captivity and then moved to the wild as a group and released back out in the wild where they truly belong. Pretty cool. Super cool. And the question came up, how high can she jump? So back to we, Samantha. Samantha can't jump that high anymore. She's quite elderly <laughs> she's she's in her 30s and um she has wow. kind of a belly but she could jump from the ground up onto this four foot table no problem or up onto this deck rail and she could leap from tree to tree about oh about 15 feet much further than we can but i've seen some younger lemurs with amazing jumping ability she can't do that any longer but she does she does still does better than we ever could wow and then ringo how old is ringo ringo is four years old now Four years old. So he's still young compared to Samantha in her 30s. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. We've got um, lots of so cutes and Oz, of course. Of course. Um, if he is not nocturnal, why does he have big eyes? And from the video, a, like they're kind of yellow. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Maybe, actually, maybe they, the, their ancestors were nocturnal. 
and they've retained the large eyes, but they also have those large eyes so they can see small insects. They can have very good vision. And also they have um, color vision. They can tell if a fruit is ripe or not. They can have color vision, just like we do. Huh. Which is rare in mammals, is that correct? Well, not in fruit eaters. In fruit eaters, it's um, imperative that you know what's available for eating. But in creatures that are, are predatory, like let's say the, the, you know, the cats, they, they don't see in color. I always learn so much from you guys. Thank you for clarifying that. So since it is the uh, lemur poop show that you so graciously named it, mm -hmm. they keep pooping. So when was the last time you fed them, asks one of our family. They eat all day long. They, <laughs> because this guy is a browser and a grazer, he's going through the forest, he's picking up little things to eat. It's a major part of what makes his life uh, meaningful. I mean, he's out there, he's, he's, he's finding things to eat. It keeps him active. He eats all the time. Now, he gets a bigger diet in the morning than he does at night, but he's always has food available to him. Um, but it is, it, every now and again, we just get lucky and have, um, they won't poop again for another couple hours, but we got lucky here today. But, but we do know what goes in must come out. Yes, <laughs> and they eat a lot for their body size. He weighs right about four pounds, and this guy eats oh, almost a pound of food every single day. So that's, that's wow. pretty amazing. That's a, that's a quarter of his body weight. I wish but we could like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> lots of pretzels. <laughs> right, lots of pretzels. Um, you mentioned, if I heard correctly, that he is a primate. So the question is, are they in any way related to monkeys? They are, they are the ancestors to the monkeys. This is a prosumen or the pre-primate. Pre-primate. Mm -hmm. Look how beautiful he is. Did you see that, that reading he was giving me? He was kind of finally settling into the, enjoying the sun and giving me a big reading. He Did I talk about their sense. tooth comb? Their tooth comb is something I, I think I might have glanced over here. I didn't really talk about their bottom teeth, not really good for chewing or for biting. They're, it's more of a comb and it sticks straight out and they use that and they just rake it through their fur. They spend a lot of time grooming their fur and the fur of their troop members. You see all this hair coming out right now? I don't know if you guys can see it, but everything at um, Conservation Ambassadors Wild Things is shedding right now or molting its feathers. So there's fur and feathers everywhere. It's a good boy. So a teeth comb. A tooth comb, correct. Tooth comb. Mm -hmm. Unique tooth I guess fingers? it would be a teeth comb because there's more than one, but they call it a tooth comb. Okay. So <laughs> that would, make, that would be, make more sense. Leave it to the librarian to correct the English. <laughs> I didn't actually intend to do that. Is that <laughs> unique to lemurs? What's that? Is that unique to lemurs? Um, eh, well, no. The bush babies um, have that as well. There are several primitive primates that have um, tooth cones, several different species. Okay. And then do their pupils get bigger at night? They do. Mm -hmm. They can dilate, and he can actually see fairly well at night, better than we can. Um, you know, he's not a nocturnal animal, so he's not, he doesn't have that night vision goggles or anything like that, but he's, um, he's better than we can in the dark. With those big, beautiful eyes. He's grooming himself right now. Oh boy. And then how many hours do they sleep? It's a good question. I don't know. You should look that up. I, uh, this guy here, once it gets dark, he's usually inside with Circe with the other ringtail and they're kind of curled up in a ringtail lemur ball and they sleep until the dawn. So it's pretty much just staying inside. You know, you know, it makes sense for them in the wild, if they're out wandering around when it's dark, they could fall prey to other animals. They have to be, they have to be aware of their surroundings. And so sleeping during the, the nighttime helps them to stay safe in the wild. So there's a, a bonus that um, Gabe threw out earlier he was giving us a hint. So uh, what, what was the song, Gabe? What was your hint? Oh, that's right. That's King Julian. I like to move it, move it. I'm sure you know it. I'm not going to do the dancing here. But um, yes, I like to move it, move it. And it's a very popular thing. And usually when I bring him out in school programs, there's at least one person in the audience that starts to, to sing the song. It can be with a little annoying at times. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I've got lemur hair all up my nose. Very, very oh. itchy. <laughs> and then I need clarification on one of the questions. Um, how is ring to tail? Um, oh. If Addison could clarify that question, or maybe you understand it, Gabe. I, what is ring to tail? How, is, know, ring how to is the tail? ring tail? Oh, like, is oh, ring? oh I'll show you. Oh. Look at that tail. Thank you, Addison. And how long is it? It is twice the length of his body. It's an amazing tail. Some say it's the longest tail to body ratio in the animal kingdom. Look at that tail, it's just amazing. And when he's really hopping, you can watch it move. It really does help him, it's like a sail. It's very wispy. It's not, it's not um, very thick fur, but it, it acts like a sail to help keep his balance as he's jumping. Pretty cool. He is beautiful. The other question was, why are ringed tails called that? Well, I think that when we name animals, we look at their physical characteristics, what they look like, and that's usually how we, we describe them, that becomes their name. Um, in the lemurs, it's really boring. We have a black and white rough lemur. We have a, a mouse lemur that's the size of a mouse. We have the ring-tailed lemur. We have, we have the brown lemur and the black lemur. So they really got a little boring in the names. Uh, with a few exceptions, like the Safika lemur, which I think is a cool name. Say you know, that name again? Safika. Safika? That, yeah. One cool thing about these guys, you know, they're called lemurs. And the word lemur is a Malagasy word. It's, a, it's in the language of the people of Madagascar. That means ghost. Because some lemur species, not the ringtails or the brown lemur, but the rough lemurs have this call that sounds like it's out of this world, this amazing cat sound. And they used to think that maybe those were like the ghosts of the forest. And that's how they got the name lemur. Pretty cool. Boy, we're so, just not being able to stump Gabe. Oh, you, can, you can stump me, I just make something up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, but the yeah. library with our resources might be able to yeah. counter that. That's right, exactly, that'd be problematic. However, so, our summer reading theme this year is Imagine Your Story. So we welcome stories, true and made up. <laughs> true and made up. Awesome. <laughs> oh, the, um, the one thing I would like to stress before we, before we go, and I think I've touched on it briefly, everybody loves lemurs. They're gorgeous, gorgeous animals. We have to do a better job than the people before us in terms of protecting Madagascar. And I think there is hope. I think there's hope by people traveling to Madagascar to visit the, the lemurs and the, the beautiful forests that are there, providing a source of funding for the, for the land, meaning put aside land and, and then people will travel there to see the lemurs in the wild where they truly belong. Um, I, like I said, I hope they're here for forever. I hope they're here for many, many more years. They're fascinating creatures. So, um... Give us a little overview about Conservation Ambassadors. I know you touched on it at the right. very beginning. We are a rescue center and we have two sites. One here in Weimar that we operate, Jojo and I, and there's another site in Paso Robles, California. And together we have wild things up here, Zudio and Paso Robles, and together we're Conservation Ambassadors. And we are an organization whose mission is to utilize animals that have nowhere else to go only animals that need homes, and take those animals into schools and clubs and camps and libraries and, and teach people. And get You know, even more than teaching people specific things, I think the most important thing is to get people excited about the wild world so maybe they'll be more likely to, to, to protect that, the wilderness, the wild area. So um, I think we've got one last question. Okay. And, uh, maybe we'll, we'll stump Gabe on this one, maybe. Hey. Why did I like Jojo so much, Gabe? I said because he's also a very primitive primate. <laughs> but aside from that, Jojo spends a lot of time just sitting with them. And I'm a pretty busy person. I do most of the work while Jojo's out there sitting with them and just being very, very positive and um, bringing them treats. So, Should we hey. let Jojo answer that question? No, well, that's so. pretty much the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I get all the fun time. <laughs> Well, I want to thank Washoe County Libraries for having us. And and next week, what do we have next week? Oh, uh, no, no, no. We're only oh, going to give right. a hint. A hint. Well, I can't remember what it is, so I need a hint. 
Well, we talked about bringing both species out and the, the easiest hint I can come up with is never smile at us. Whoa, okay. Oh, you guys got to come and see some teeth next week. All right. Um, please come in. We're going to meet one of my favorite animals to talk about, one of my favorite uh, group of family of animals on the planet. Um, it's uh, some cold-blooded adventures next week. So coming out on Wednesday. All right. Gabe and conservation ambassadors and Jojo behind the scenes there. Thank you so much for sharing your talent and your knowledge and, and our poop. And your poop. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us.